Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena. Welcome to episode 41 of Game Programming. So this time we're going to take a look at a very simple episode, just taking a look at what the player class is, what it does and how it works. So um, we've sort of created this like this framework of um, this hierarchy really of of all these subclasses and they, they all sort of get back from entity, right? Entity is like the, the root, the mother of all freaking things entities i guess um but yeah so the entity is like it's like the head right it's, it's the top and then we sort of go down to mob and then from mob we branch off to you know mobs so in other words a mob i said last time was basically a character or like you know like a, a character yeah so it could be the player it could be other players it could be animals anything basically anything that moves um something that's, th something that's mobile so if we actually on over here in our navigator, uh, right on the mob folder, if we right click hit new and class, we can actually create a new player class. We're gonna call this player and it would probably just be in the mob. Um, we could probably put it in its own package, but I'm just thinking right now. I don't think I will though, just because, um, just because you know, there's probably not gonna be any subclasses to player. There's not gonna be any, anything related to player that's gonna be in the player folder. So if there's nothing in it, might as well just create it in the mob folder so we'll just hit finish and here we go so public class player first thing we need to do is make sure that it extends mob um and because it's in the same class we won't even have to import that and we need a few things here but i'm just thinking i might save them for another episode so that i sort of you know so that i sort of cover um each episode by a subject not multiple subjects um so what i will do though is probably uh, well, there's a constructor, first of all. There is going to be a constructor with X and Y. Um, there's probably going to be a, another constructor with nothing. And that's going to be it for the constructors. Now, um, X and Y. Why is there a constructor with X and Y? Um, the reason is sometimes players need to be created at a specific location. So, public player might just create a player at... Um, at a default location, like a spawning location. But sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, um, the reason I'm thinking of right now is like in Realm of the Mad God, when you actually enter a different realm, you actually, you know, you appear at a specific like spawn point, right? And what happens is, you know, obviously I, I don't know the actual code to Realm of the Mad God, um, but I would imagine what happens is you, as you play a unit, it despawns from the previous realm, it loads the new realm into the game, and then it finally it creates a new player object for you um, at a particular location, because obviously you basically know that every time you spawn, you sort of spawn at a, at a different location. So as it creates that new location, um, it is created at X and Y. So um, if we go back to our entity thing, that is really the place that has X and Y. So in other words, we obviously don't need to create int X and int Y. We don't actually need to create those variables in the player class. We can simply just say that this dot X equals X and this dot Y equals Y and that's it because this dot X if we actually control click on that on that it'll take us back to a, to the entity class so we can see where the variable is actually defined so that's brilliant um, the other thing is for this thing um, we'll talk about that in, in another episode because again I don't want to you know deal with half a subject in one video and then you know come back to the same subject in another video I sort of want to cover one subject matter in one in, in in one video so that I'm not you know sort of confusing people and being like all right well we're going to be covering inputs today but um to do that you should watch the previous episode because I sort of did half of it then no I sort of want to do it all in one video <clears throat> okay so um the other things we need is the update method so when, when whenever we actually hit um whoops public void update when, whenever we sort of hit, um, I don't know, an arrow key, I don't know, basically, basically when we move, when we hit something on our keyboard, we want our player to move. So yeah, we need an update method. And finally, a render method. So yeah, um, and the render method, of course, will render our game. Now, a few things. You can see here that uh, update actually overrides Another update, um, it just put a breakpoint there. <laughs> it actually overrides, um, if we go to here, if we, um, if we actually control click on this override thing, it'll actually take us to it till it's root. So update, and of course update then overrides the update in our entity thing. So that's wonderful, right? What that tells me right away is that we don't actually need to call player.update to update the player. However, render doesn't override anything. And 
The primary reason is we don't actually have render method in our mob class. Now, whether we will or won't, I'm not 100% sure if I actually want to have um, a random method in the mob class. Let me just think quickly. Mob, mob, mob. Well, all mobs need to render, so to be honest, I probably will put it here. And I'll make it public, obviously. Random method needs to be public, so does update, just because we're, we'll be accessing them um, in, other, in other classes. So... If we go back here, you'll see that a green arrow has appeared, meaning that we are actually overriding it from mob. That's brilliant. All right, so that is the basic structure for our player class. Um, next time we'll probably cover input. So in other words, you can see that if we go back to our game class, the way that our player moves, you know, sort of works over here. So it scrolls the map and it's sort of in, in, in the game.java update method. Um, it's not actually moving the player. It's sort of just scrolling the screen and you know, obviously we're not actually keeping track of where the player is. We're just, you know, keeping track of the X and Y variables. We'll move all that into our player class and we will actually probably, you know, finish up input for the player object so that any, any players in our game can actually move, you know, using the arrow keys for their individual instances. But yeah, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit that like button and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.